In brightest day and blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power, Green Lantern's light. You heard it, what's going on? Top 10 nerd family and welcome back. Now, I know many of us have strong opinions on the Green Lantern movie with Ryan Reynolds. To be honest, I kinda hope Ryan Reynolds shows up in the new Justice League Snyder Cut. I mean, we briefly saw a Green Lantern ring zip away during the opening battle, and if anybody can reprise the same superhero role years later and still kill it, Ryan Reynolds has proven himself before with, of course, Deadpool. Going from Wolverine Origins to, well, Deadpool. Night and day. The fact that there are so many Green Lantern storylines to choose from baffles me that we don't have more live action movies happening right now. So who are the Green Lanterns? Why are there so many? The Guardians of the Universe created the intergalactic police force known as the Green Lantern Corps. Each Green Lantern member is assigned to their own sector. And there's a lot of sectors, a lot of stories, and it's a lot of fun, mostly. The Green Lanterns are powered from the strength of will. Some have drastically different backstories as there are only a small percentage of Green Lanterns that are actually human. So without further ado, here are the top 10 most powerful Green Lanterns you've probably never heard of. And in no particular order, coming in at number 10, Simon Baz. First appearing in the New 52 FCDB Special Edition number 1, he's a Lebanese American born in Dearborn, Michigan. After seeing the attacks of the World Trade Center on the news when he was only 10 years old, he and his family faced ostracism because they were Muslim. His sister even got bullied and attacked physically, so Simon would have to intervene. And as years went on, he got an engineering degree, and shortly after that, a job at an automotive plant. After the financial crisis, he was let go and had to resort to stealing cars and reselling the parts just to make ends meet. He was also a great street racer and even made some dough that way. Accidentally stealing a truck filled with explosives, Simon ends up getting arrested and they suspected him as a terrorist, sending him over to Guantanamo Bay. Ignoring his pleas of innocence, Simon was nearly tortured. It was then a Green Lantern ring popped into the room to save the day, removing him from the facility. So what makes Simon stand out? I mean, besides his strong origin story, he has emerald sight. Yeah, that's right, Simon Baz can see glimpses of the future. He also used to carry a gun with him even while wielding the Green Lantern ring. Why? Well, because he didn't trust a whole lot of people, and he wanted to back up in case the ring failed him, which it did a couple of times. The ring itself? It's actually two rings forged into one. Come again? So when Hal Jordan and Sinestro were imprisoned in the Black Hand's Black Lantern ring, the two rings actually fused together. And the ring chose Frank Leminski first. Frank had purposely gotten a job at Arkham Asylum because he knew the ring picked its host based on willpower and overcoming fear. And it worked out for a bit because it ultimately decided that it made a mistake and found none other than, you heard it, Simon Baz. Number 9, Guy Gardner. Making his first appearance in Green Lantern Volume 2, number 59, Guy Gardner was chosen to be the backup for Hal Jordan. The ring says you gotta have courage and willpower, but is it possible to maintain those characteristics whilst being a bad guy? A bad guy? Guy? Got him. Turns out it is very possible. While the events of the Blackest Night unfolded, Green Lanterns were exposed to other rings. And with his temper issues, he was bestowed the Red Lantern Ring. He actually had both at one point. Christmas colors, fun, how beautiful. I mean, this guy may be a bit of a meanie, but ultimately with his willpower, he's proven that he can still be a hero after all. Nice. See, this is a character arc I would love to see in theaters. We need more Green Lantern movies like this. I mean, even in his early life, Guy was abused by his father, Ronald. And I feel like these character arcs and backstories are important to see, especially when anger and willpower are balanced in his life story. These origins are relatable. Make it happen. Number eight, Chip. This one is too fun not to include. Making his first appearance in Green Lantern Volume 2, Issue 149, Chip is, well, Look it up, obviously. So basically, the Crapster army invaded Sector 1014, and once they killed that Green Lantern, Doctor of X took his army and went to his homeworld, Hyven. This little man, Chip, was sentenced to death to set an example. Don't do it, look at him, please. He was the leader of the Hyvenite resistance, so it made sense to do it, I guess, I guess. Chip was then visited by one of the guardians of the universe, gave him a Green Lantern ring, and Bob's your uncle. So one thing I love about this dude is that he's, he's a chipmunk, squirrel looking thing. He's, he's so cute, and as you may have noticed, but that doesn't stop him from killing it. Yeah, he just rocked Hal Jordan. I'm a fan of Chip. He even took on the Man of Steel himself in an Injustice Gods Among Us storyline. He attacked Superman by going after his mind. I feel like if you have a movie with this guy, it'll feel similar to how Rocket was portrayed in Guardians of the Galaxy. At first people are like, ah, oh, he's a little fluffy cute thing, and then bam, you get punched in the head like 10 times. Number seven, Slack. 
Who's next on our list? None other than Chip's best friend. Slack is this cool looking four-armed alien green lantern from Slagia, Sligia, one of them's right, who is a protector for the Book of Oa. He's quite tall, has pink skin and a beak-like mouth. Making his first debut in Green Lantern Volume 2, Issue 149, Salak is actually second in command right behind the Guardians of the Universe. Nice. He's a veteran with his power wing, so he doesn't really rely on it until he absolutely needs it. He's a pessimist and he's kind of a loner. I mean, aren't we all at some point? Come on. His importance doesn't go unnoticed. Being the protocol officer of the corpse, he plans missions and answers to none other than the Guardians of the Universe. It's kind of cool having your boss the Guardians of the Universe, nice. And as I said earlier, his best friend is Chip. So once Salak was too late stopping the execution of Sinestro, so the OA battery ended up being destroyed, making his ring inoperable. So he headed to Hyven to reunite with Chip, whose ring was one of the few that still worked. Clutch. So Salak acted as an advisor to him. What a power duo. I'd love to play Salak in a movie. I feel like I have the lankiness. I don't know, what do you think? He's taller than me. I mean, he's like seven feet. I'm not too far off, maybe. We'll see. Number six, Chase Salon. Your species have any problem with that? No, my arms are non-organic. I do, however, get silica mites. Fascinating. Perhaps we could consume refreshment together and speak of our adventures. That's a cool looking thing. Making his first appearance in the Green Lantern Volume 2, number nine, Chase Salon is a being that can use 13 senses rather than our normal five. The Green Lantern of Sector 1416 has a different appearance than usual, as you may have seen. I mean, look at him. So what exactly is this dude's deal? Well, he's from Barrio 3, which is a world where crystal life forms have dominated. So he's a sentient crystalline sphere, and like I said, can use 13 senses. Unreal. This dude's powers are super underrated, okay? He was given a power ring by the guardians of the universe due to his extensive willpower. He's also a member of the Alpha Lantern Corps and the Dark Stars, an intergalactic police force. Number five, Hanu. Making its first appearance in Green Lantern Volume 3, Issue 49, and also appearing in the 2011 Green Lantern film, Ao, Hanu is a beast of brute force. He's originally from the planet Ovacron 6. The warriors there think that using a weapon is overrated. It's frowned upon. They say a weapon makes you weak. Okay, super bad ass. So he relies on his own strength rather than the ring. That's cool. Yeah, I have a ring, but you know, I'd rather just punch you in the head. It's easier. This sure did come in handy when he was freed from a prison from Hal Jordan and Guy Gardner. He tore the place up without even using the ring. And when he does use it, it's insane, okay? So during the Sinestro Corpse War, he finally used the ring to punch through Horku. And Horku's the same species as Hanu, so that doesn't shine light on how strong this dude is. I don't know what will. Number four, Alan Scott. The Golden Age Green Lantern, making his debut in 1940 back in the All-American Comics number 16. He's the first ever Green Lantern, so of course I'm gonna include him in this list. He actually forged a Green Lantern from a meteor. This dude was around even before the Green Lantern Corps, so he's not too popular with the current run of things. So he gets his power in a much different way than all of the other Green Lanterns. He actually uses a ring that's magic based instead of being linked to the central battery on Oa. I feel like we need to see this origin story on this big screen ASAP. It's too cool to ignore. Number three, Sodom Yat. Making his first appearance in Tales of the Green Lantern Corps annual number two, back in 1986, Sodom Yat is a guy from the Daxamite race who are cousins of the Kryptonians. Pretty sweet. Daxamites have similar powers to Kryptonians, but instead of being vulnerable to kryptonite, they're vulnerable to lead, just basic lead. So if you're gonna take some notes around Sodom, make sure you hide it or else you might kill him. So this guy's loaded. He's basically a god, but no lead. Kind of like no capes, no lead. He doesn't even really need a ring. He's already so strong from the ion entity has given him an unbelievable strength. He always dreamed of being a space explorer. So once he noticed an alien spaceship crash near Earth, he found Tessog, and after his parents caught wind of the new friend, his parents killed Tessog and brainwashed Sodom to forget the whole thing. After seeing Tessog in a museum, dead, he was reminded of the actions that had taken place. So he reconstructed Tessog's ship and then was bestowed with the Green Lantern ring. Nice, you did it, full circle. And he became the ultimate Green Lantern and the last member of the Corps. The prophecy came from none other than, drum roll, Number two, Avin Sir. We all remember arguably the best part of the Green Lantern movie, the beginning. We find Avin Sir after he crash landed on Earth before giving the ring to Hal Jordan. The purple alien is portrayed by none other than Django Fett himself, Tamara Morrison. But who is his character and why is he so important? Making his debut in showcase number 22, Avin Sir was a Green Lantern from sector 2814 and was the Green Lantern right before Hal Jordan as you saw in the movie. So before that, he actually visited Earth a handful of times. He teamed up with an ancestor of Hal Jordan in the American Old West to fight an alien named Traitor. 
Solid name, very fitting. So why is he flying a spaceship if he has the ring? Well, he was told by the prophecy that his ring would eventually fail him. So he loaded his spaceship up with weapons for when the frightful day comes. And after being attacked by Sinestro and crash landing on Earth, he chose Hal Jordan to bear the ring as he was closer to his location than Guy Gardiner. Ah, so close. Hal ended up using the ring to hide the body and his ship underneath a mountain. It's pretty cool. And finally, number one, Nort. Making his first debut back in 1988 in Justice League International, this cool looking member of the Green Lantern Corps and later on Justice League Antarctica might be my personal favorite. He's a funny little quirky dude. He reminds me of, I don't know, me maybe? Who knows? He's this quirky underdog, literally. Look at him, he's a dog. He instantly reminded me of uh, Peppy Hare from Star Fox, just like this wise looking dude. He's actually disliked by other heroes and is often looked upon as the loser, despite how incompetent he may be. Okay, maybe I don't relate to this guy as much as I thought, or do I? He can't even read a map. So I mean, come on dude, you gotta figure it out. He tries his best though, he's brave and he's super honorable. I feel like a character such as himself would be great to see in live action. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people who would relate. He kind of reminds me of Dustin from Stranger Things, the way he wants to help and he has his moments where he genuinely kicks up <laughs> Nort's uncle, Newt, pushed him through the Green Lantern training, so he's more than capable when the opportunity arises to do so. Well, there you have it, guys. Now, I know there's a lot of Green Lanterns to choose from here, and there's tons that I probably missed that you would have loved to hear, so let us know in the comments which ones you want to hear more of. And as always, thanks for watching. Make sure if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button, and while you're there, hit that notifications bell. That way you don't miss any future videos. I'm Taylor McWaters. Thanks for watching. See ya. <clears throat> Just jumped, now I'm out of breath. Awesome. So much saliva in my mouth, I'm like a snake. I feel like I'm a dentist. Number eight, <laughs> uh, Chip. This sure did come in handy when he was freed as a prison, oh, from a prison, I can't read. Quirky underdog, literally, look at him, he is a dog. <clears throat> he is a dog.